All right, this video is going to be on graphing cube root functions. And so, uh, obviously, a cube root has a different index than a square root. A cube root looks like this. So, remember, we have the radical, but then the index has a 3 right there. So, we're going to talk about what kind of functions can you get, or what do the functions look like uh, when you're graphing a cube root function. A couple things about a cube root before we actually go to the graph. Remember that a cube root can... Uh, you can take the cube root of a negative number, like negative 8, or you can take the cube root of a positive number, like positive 8. And so remember, cube root works not only for positives, but also for negatives. Uh, so this one would be negative 2, <coughs> and this would be positive 2. So in essence, when we look at this function, y equals the cube root of x, uh, what we want to realize is that you can plug in any number for x because of the fact that you can cube root any number, both positive and negative. So when we make a table, when we make a table for this, uh, you're going to actually need both positives and negatives, and you want to pick perfect cubes. Uh, for those who don't remember what perfect cubes are, I'll write down a few, uh, but you're really only going to want to use a couple of them. Uh, perfect cubes are uh, one. 8, uh, geez, 27, um, and then 64, and then 125, and oh, I can't go past that. What's that, 216? I could be wrong. I'd have to double check. Don't have a calculator. Anyway, um, or the negatives, right? So uh, plus or minus 1, right? Plus or minus 8, plus or minus 27. Uh, those actually will work. But really, I only stick with uh, trying to figure out when I'm graphing cube root functions, I really only use 1 and 8. Uh, oh, I forgot about 0. 0 also works. So when I'm trying to put in x values, I use negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, and 8. And so then I'm just going to plug those numbers in and get y values. So when I take the cube root of negative 8, that's negative 2. Cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. Cube root of 0 is 0. Cube root of 1 is 1. And cube root of 8 is 2. And I'm going to plot all those points on our coordinate plane. Negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, negative 8, negative 2. And that's what the graph's going to look like. Um, it, <coughs> it, it's kind of tough to, to draw in one part. So what I do is I start in the middle. And I draw it that way, and then I start in the middle again. And I draw it that way. It's one continuous graph. Uh, and the domain is all real numbers. So negative infinity to infinity. And the range is also the same. All real numbers. All right, so a cube root graph is slightly different. Uh, actually, a lot different than a square root graph because a square root graph uh, doesn't have a domain and range of all real numbers. You can't use certain numbers. And so, in essence, a cube root function, you can, and it goes all the way to the left and to the right and up and down. Um, but you need five points uh, to graph this. So uh, let's just take a look at one where you may have to do it by hand where it's shifted a little bit with its transformations. So let's go with uh, the graphing form first. Uh, your graphing form will look like this. Y equals A, and then the absolute, or excuse me, the cube root of X minus H, and then plus K. So the middle of the graph, the middle point, can be found by figuring out what h and k are. <coughs> and that'll be your center point of that graph, uh, where 0, 0 was on the first graph. And then you'll have to find more points by hand figuring out uh, perfect cubes. And so uh, let's give it a shot. All right, so for this example, let's go with y equals uh, the cube root of x plus 1. And then we'll go with minus 2. All right, so the middle point 
is going to be negative 1, negative 2. We'll graph that, negative 1, negative 2. And then <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to get the four other points. And the way that you get those four other points in your table is you want to pick x values. that create perfect cubes and to make your life easier the perfect cubes you should be trying to create are negative 8, negative 1, 1, and 8. Uh, that way it'll fit easily on the graph. So if you think about what number could I plug in for x here in order to get negative 8. That x would be negative 9 because negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. What could I plug in for x to get negative 1? That would be negative 2. What would I plug in for 1 uh, to get, or excuse me, plug in for x to get 1? That would be 0. And what could I plug in for x to get 8? Uh, that would be 7 because 7 plus 1 is 8. And so now you have your x values and you can plug them in and <clears throat> let order of operations take over. So negative 9 goes in, that's negative 8. Inside the radical, we know that the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. And then you have to subtract the 2 that's at the end, so negative 4. So negative 9, negative 4. And then negative 2 goes in, that's negative 1 on the inside. Cube root of negative 1 is negative 1, so that's negative 3. So negative 2, negative 3. 0 goes in, that's 1, so it's cube root of 1, which is 1. And then 1 minus 2 is negative 1. And then, last one, 7 goes in, that's 8, cube root of 8, that's 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. So as long as you use these perfect cubes, you should uh, walk away with uh, a nice looking graph. Uh, just remember the middle point is at HK and that the perfect cubes that you want to create underneath the radical are negative 8, negative 1, 1, and 8. And uh, it should be able to give you a graph that looks like this every single time. I'm not great at drawing them, <laughs> so that looks pretty awful. So uh, hopefully in class you'll see uh, a more beautiful picture. Uh, I'll get better at drawing them. Uh, but have a wonderful day and uh, talk to you later.